Good afternoon. It is uh, Tuesday afternoon. Dad and I had some errands to run this morning, so uh, just getting back to the farm here. We've got a combine that we're going to, I don't know, we're going to do a little bit of something to it. So it's really nice out. I should power wash is what I should do. Uh, but we don't really need to do anything on the combine. What we need to do, oh, that's what I should do is get the corn head, drag it up here and blow it off and start working on that. Yeah, we might do that. I don't know. We'll see. But uh, the first thing I'm going to do is come back here on the tailboard up in there. We're going we're gonna to dig that pile of stuff out of there that I found last night. We'll start there. Oh, there was a bunch up there. We picked all that stuff out. We got all of it down there. Right, I'm going to regret this, but we're going to try and rinse it down without getting soaked. All right, much better. We'll go with that for now. Oh, there's a spot we got to get. We got to get that spot right there. And if I don't stop looking, we'll never stop finding them. So stop looking, but get that one first. Better. I moved up underneath the feeder house here to take a look and see what it looked like. It's not great. There's a lot of dirt back in there. A lot of already kind of rinsed down, so I uh, spent a little time working here, rinsing stuff off. It's hard to get in here, I understand, but we got to do a better job. Whew. There ended up being a lot up in there. All that on the floor is from, from what I just did, plus half of it got washed down the drain, so we'll have to clean that out again sometime. But yeah, we got a lot, of, lot, a lot, a lot of dirt from out from up in there. That is good. And I think I'm, well, I, I'm gonna say that I'm done with the hose for now, but I'm probably not. Let's be honest, we'll find some more. Um, I was thinking about either trying to pull that concave out, we got one concave to chain, change, or, the, I got two more chains that I need to take off. We might try and work on those yet. Well, I got caught up. Uh, seed customer needed some paperwork done. Tomorrow, I'm gonna be on the road. Um, Tony's coming, my sales rep. We're gonna go out and uh, see some seed customers and stuff, some guys that wanted to go over orders now that we're post-harvest and stuff. So I'm gonna work on that. So I did that and now it's time to go home. So that's it for here. But this is nothing for a video. So we're gonna see if we can record some more tomorrow. See you in the morning. Good morning. I had a couple of days off from filming. Not out of necessity more than I just didn't want to do it. Um, yesterday I spent the whole day on the road doing seed business stuff. Tony, my sales rep, came with me and we had a pretty good day. Found a lot of guys, talked to them and sold a little bit, so that was good. And uh, the day before, Dad and I had some errands and stuff to run. I did actually do a little work out here. I filmed part of that. I might throw it in the video here, I might not. I don't know, we'll see. But we're working on a combine today. And uh, I think the first thing I'm gonna tackle is pulling the concave out. So we run, I'll just show you. So we've been running these Condex KX7 concaves and uh, there's two different styles you can see there. This more full one here is what they call their max thresh. The round ones are the max round, similar to a John Deere round bar. And uh, the only thing we do between corn and beans and wheat is change number two. So these are half width. There's six of them instead of three. And uh, that one there, we change and put that one in to the more aggressive style. So we've got to unbolt it. There's two bolts here, a couple through the side, a pin on the other side, and that should come out of there. Sometimes it's a little difficult, but we'll see what we can do. Before we get to that, you guys remember those components that we took out in the last video yeah see how we still got water sitting here these pans just don't drain I'm gonna fix that we're just gonna drill a couple of holes in the bottom so that the water can get through and it may make me lose a little bit of wheat it'll be okay well it's draining through the cleaning fan which we need to clean out but that'll help us 
get rid of that water, and then once that stuff, the film that's on top of the water dries, we can pick it out of there and get it cleaned up a little better. All right, back to this. We need a 15 millimeter wrench socket. All right, I got to go around the other side. Yeah. Oh, man, look how much of that water came out of there. Sweet. Good deal. Um, I got the bolts out here. I think there's maybe one on the other side and then that pin. Um, but I need to be able to turn the rotor inside of there so that we can get it lined up right. So I took these bolts out on this, and uh, I need to shift our rotor into neutral. It'll be just like that. Now I can reach in here and spin that. There was one bolt connecting them on the bottom there. You can see we got some trash and stuff in here. That should fall out when we pull that out of there, but it might make it very difficult to get out of there. So we got to pull this pin, and then this, and that piece comes out of there. But it may be... Yeah, we have to try and push it from the other side or it's stuck, so we'll have to get it out somehow. Okay, everything that's holding that concave in there, except the dirt, is out. Um, I need to close it. So right now they are all the way down. The concave is kind of wide open. I need to bring it all the way up and close it to give us more clearance underneath to get it out. And we got to figure out how to pry this side down. So uh, this electric motor here is what does that. It turns this gear, which turns this arm, which pulls up on these rods, lifts that whole thing up out of the way. So that's all computer controlled from the uh, command center in the cab. Well, I'm making progress. A little slow here, but we are making progress. I've got, a, got it pulled out a little bit, but I can't get behind it to pry it is the problem. So I don't know. I'll keep wiggling it back and forth, I guess. Oh, got it, finally. Well, I got it down. It should wiggle out of there pretty easily now. I can just kind of move it up and down, and then we gotta rotate that rotor like I was saying and get it in just the right spot. We should take this shield off. I bet there's a whole bunch of crap back behind there. <sighs> it never ends I tell you. It just never ends. There we go. They're a little dirty but overall not too bad. Definitely getting rounded off on these leading edges and flat spotted on the top there. He's got some wear to him. Um, We've got some of these new, the nice thing, one of the nice things about these is that you can take these individual pieces out and put new ones in. And you can see here's a new one that is, it's very round. And I'm sure you can't see it, but these got a flattened side to them. Got a big gouge there, must have hit a rock or something. Huh. So I do have, I actually have another one of these. Now, this one's got a little bit of use on it, maybe one or two years. I don't know. We had been changing um, two of them between corn and beans and wheat. Uh, I had been putting just the aggressive one on the front and then changing this one out as well, but in talking to the company reps for Condex, they sort of suggested leaving that one as it is and just running the changing the one between wheat and corn. So I wonder if I should try and take these ones loose and get all that crap out of there as well. Probably not a bad idea. That's my, that's my biggest complaint with these, which is pretty minor, isn't it? That they're a little loose fitting and they get a bunch of dirt and stuff packed in between them. And then they're tight and really hard to get in and out. Look at that. I got it all cleaned out of there. Uh, I'm, I just loosened these bolts up and it kind of gave me enough wiggle room to get the dirt and stuff to come out so I may try and bolt those together they had told me just to bolt them together in pairs so like these two here are bolted together these two and then the front two but if I put some bolts between those it'll hold everything together better keep that dirt out of there uh, I think I'm gonna try that but I am ready to slide this one here back in so I'm gonna go ahead and do that These are the threshing elements. So this kind of gives you a better idea how this works a little bit, I guess. Let's see here. So the, the grain is coming up, or the, the material, the crop material is coming up through the feeder house, right? And there is a beater sitting right in front of where, where we're working, right in front of here. Uh, it's called the feed accelerator. And it feeds it into the rotor here. And then that rotor kind of gets it, and there's a auger fins, kind of, like flighting up there. 
that pushes it back and these are the threshing elements and those threshing elements take that crop and they grind it between that and these concaves which is what does the actual threshing and loosening the grain you know either the beans out of the pods the wheat out of the heads of the wheat the um, corn off the cob that kind of stuff and then the grain and whatever other small pieces all fall down through here onto these augers which push it back into the cleaning area and the rest of the material, the straw, the cobs, the soybean stems, all continue on all the way through the back. And this front part here is, you know, obviously that's where the concaves and those threshing elements are. That's where it's designed to separate this stuff, the get the grain threshed out of whatever it's in. And then the back area here is just open grates with fingers inside there, right there that is just there to mix that material up and, and get it to separate so all of the grain falls down through and none of the grain goes out the back. So that's how, that's how that rotor works. Check it out. I got it in there. It took a little doing, but we got it. So uh, I haven't tightened up any of the bolts yet. I am putting some extra in here, but I'm out of bolts. I have some that are the right diameter, right uh, you know, size bolt, but they're too long which I mean, it would probably be okay, but I have to run to the John Deere dealer anyway. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get a few bolts while I am up there. We'll come back and tighten this up. And then I'm thinking that um, this afternoon, I'm actually gonna get the corn head out, bring it up in front of the shop. And uh, we'll start with air, use the air compressor, try and blow it up and get it, blow it off, get it cleaned uh, off a little bit. And yeah, the weather's still halfway decent out, it's cloudy and just kind of dreary, but um, it's not raining and it's not below freezing. Look, my farm focused order came. We'll run this back to the shop, to the office, and open it up. I will say though, um, Ben, the farm focus tape makes it really difficult to hide Christmas presents if people know what is in that box. Just saying, maybe during the holidays regular tape. Anyway, there's still time to get your stuff before Christmas, I think. They have not told me otherwise, so if you need some Borderview Farms uh, merchandise, sweatshirts, hats, t-shirts, uh, go on over to farmfocus.com and get them, quickly. Let's see what we got. My new hats. Some sweatshirts, some t-shirts under there. Good deal. And I got the bolts and nuts that I needed. Plenty of them. No, we changed it last year. Yeah, this is the feeder house drive chain. They aren't supposed to they aren't supposed to make a half circle like that. That's why we change it every year. That's it, yep. So alright, we can bolt those concaves back together and get the uh, everything tightened up, all them bolts. I think I only need three. Yeah, so. Okay, these bolts are all tight. I put bolts through the sides up here. Another row down there. I think I can do one more on the other side and uh, we should be good to go on our concaves. We should do a concave leveling procedure where you close it and rotate it and adjust these bolts. The nuts kind of up on top there to make sure that it's level and at the right spacing. I've done that. I do that occasionally. I don't do it every time because I'm not taking all the concaves out. It can't possibly move that much. So we'll make sure that nothing ticks when we are uh, get it closed or we get everything yeah. back together. Yeah, stop doing that. Uh, finding all that dirt. Gosh dang it. Next up, we're going to remove this uh, drive chain for the unloading auger system. And I was looking for a connector link. I don't see one. I found a half link right there, but there's no pins on it. It's it's not it doesn't come apart, which this chain doesn't need to come apart. You can take it off without splitting it. So we're just going to get her loosened up here and see if I can't roll it off there. I'm not putting new ones on yet, but this will let me turn the augers and stuff. Um, in the grain tank and help get a little bit of extra crap out and yeah never mind there's the connector links 
they must have been on the back side I couldn't see them so I'm gonna split this so we can see how much play and stretch is in it oh this one's not as bad it's it's not as tight of a radius it's a lot bigger chain heavier um, but it doesn't make quite a half circle but it's close that's still a lot and there's still a lot of end-to-end -end slop in it I had thought about running this one again upon uh, further analysis and you guys all telling me not to or to have the other one on hand I decided it's not worth it we'll just change it they're really not that expensive in the grand scheme of things so we're gonna replace it keep the old one as a spare, one as a spare? yeah Yep, there you go. The other chain on this combine is the tailings drive chain here. And they make that tensioner super easy to get to. Like, got all kinds of room. Yeah. That one's pretty loose too. That's the one that when we first got our 680, the combine before this, um, I left it go for a year and it broke halfway through bean harvest. So I decided at that point that we don't save chains. We put new chains on every year. So it's not worth, not worth having to stop and replace a chain in the middle of harvest to save I don't know maybe a hundred dollar chain maybe I don't know okay next up we need to tighten our tailings conveyor chain this one so the way that this works remember I told you anything that goes over the sieve but through the chaffer it's run back through the combine a second time while well, it falls into this auger and this auger brings it over to this paddle conveyor, which takes it up to our rethresher up there. And we just took the chain off of that, so that's why I can turn this. But uh, this chain has stretched a little bit. It's not terrible. I think I tightened it once during the fall during soybean harvest. So I'm trying to bring it down another spot. Um, but it's pretty easy to tighten. So we'll just go ahead and do that. We just gotta loosen up. This stuff here, bring this bolt down. We got lots of adjustment left, it looks like, so uh, we don't have to worry about removing a connector link, which right there it is if we did. That's convenient, these pins right there. Like we, You can take that half link out when you run out of adjustment. All right, so I got this all loosened up. We loosened this uh, bottom nut off. This one I haven't turned yet, so that's where it started. But essentially we can take this and pull it down a little bit in that moves this whole auger and everything down and you want to be able to move this paddle chain side to side but not pull it away from that sprocket so that's what we're trying to do and then we basically are just you know we moved it what an eighth of an inch there a little more three sixteenths we're just going to turn that nut down maybe snug it up just a little bit to get the tension we want and then we tighten this one back up and we tighten everything else up pretty easy to do okay that one's done now i do the same thing over here this is the clean grain elevator. So anything that falls through both the top and bottom sieve ends up in this one. There's the auger underneath. There's a cover that goes under there, but we took it out so we could wash stuff down through. Uh, and then this auger brings it over to here. And this much bigger paddle conveyor takes it up into the grain tank. That's how that works. So this one, again, it's a little bit loose that pulls away from that sprocket more than we would like it to so we're going to loosen these four up drop that down this one dropped down on its own I didn't have to pull it about the same maybe a touch more but we got it right where we want it now so we can tighten it up we are towards the bottom of the adjustment on this one um, that's not one that I usually have to tighten in season, so I'm not worried about having to take a half link out in the middle of the year, but we probably will next year. All right, well, we got those chains tightened up. We spent a little time picking. Ugh. All right, we're going to shift gears here. I'm going to go get the corn head. We're going to pull it out in front on the, platform, on the concrete out here. We're going to use air and try and clean it up today, get the snouts off of it, and um, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. So it's out back. I need probably, uh, I'm going to use a forklift, I think, if I can bring it around here. The forklift is a little cold-blooded. It, it doesn't run the best when it's cold. And it's, I mean, it's not warm, but it's not like it's below freezing out here. 
It takes her a minute to get warmed up, though. Go, baby, go. Hey, Phil's still hauling corn. That's what he does, he hauls grain. Well, here's the deal. We got to get all this crap out. This has to get cleaned up. So most of it, I think we can get with the air gun, but we will need water at some point. We're not doing water today. Uh, we'll see. We'll see how this goes. Well, we'll let Jack work on that. I'm going to get a screwdriver and bust some stuff out. Most of it's fairly loose. There is a little bit of wet stuff caked in here, especially around those springs. But if I can loosen it up, it'll come out with air quite a bit easier. So that's just what we're trying to do, break stuff apart a little bit here. We have to, if we don't tear these all apart to clean them up, at a minimum, we have to go through and adjust them. You can see this big gap on that spring there. That should be much smaller. They've, they've loosened up over, you know, the use of the year and stuff. So you gotta tighten this bolts up the tensioner, get them adjusted properly. Yeah. We're making progress here. Jack just asked me how many corn plants this corn had harvested this year. I have that information <laughs> based on the number of acres that we planted. And our average seeding rate, assuming a 95% survivability from what we planted, it's about 45 million, Jack. 45 million. 45 million plants. That's a lot of corn. Well, they're certainly not perfect, but after the second time picking through them, blowing them out, they're pretty good. Got a lot of it off, the heavy stuff anyway. You get a power washer on it for an hour or two. And That'll make a big difference. So I think we're, I think we did well here. We got a lot of crap off. Look at all that stuff laying on the ground. Yeah, that's a lot of trash. All right, we are done blowing that corn head off. So I actually want to pick it up with the corn head, bring it in the shop here. So we are going to go ahead and try and do that. All right, we got the head picked up, and Jack's pulling the header cart head for me. I'm going to pull the combine outside so we can clean the floor up real quick, and then we'll back this back in there. The pile of dirt never looks as big when you get it in a nice pile instead of spread out all over the floor. Okay, well, it's a little, a little cleaner, a little closer here. We need to we need to take these snouts off. I think we gonna do that. Yeah, we should do that. I don't know. I guess we don't have to. We need to power wash the head. Is what we need to do. We got all the heavy stuff off, but there's still dirt down in here that we need to get off. So that's the next thing to do here is power wash that. I don't really want to do it with it attached to the combine because the combine is fairly clean. So we'll probably just set it out there on the ground and uh, do it that way. I wonder if I'm I can set this down without taking my stock stompers off or if I'm gonna yeah that's not gonna work we're gonna have to rotate them up or take them off in order to set that down it's got to set clear down on this pad we would be flexing them a long ways to do that we'll see we'll see how we gotta do that yeah we could just set it on a block of wood probably anyway um that's the that's the next step here and then depending on how far we're gonna tear these apart um, usually we actually take the chains off, we take the guides off, we take the deck plates off and get everything cleaned up, power wash it. Sometimes, a lot of times, we paint it. Uh, sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. We did not last year, I think we did two years ago. Uh, it doesn't really need to be done. But it's one of those things that we might do it, we might not. So um, I'm leaning towards not this year. We need to look at our... Snapping rolls, see if they need to be done anything with. I don't think so. I think our snapping rolls are still in pretty darn good shape. They do a good job. I like them. We run the uh, 360 chain rolls. They do a nice job. Uh, I don't think the chains are wore out. I don't think the sprockets are wore out. Like I said, it's just a matter of adjustment because these got 
some planning. Yeah, see, there's a bunch of dirt packed inside these springs that, boy, it's nice to take those apart and clean it up. Does it have to be done? No. Do most people do it? No. But I do, usually. Okay, it's about time for me to go home. Um, one other little update that some of you may be interested in, none of you are interested in, but I'm gonna give you anyway. Uh, I got our AT&T stuff switched, so we switched our phones from Verizon to AT&T. I finally got my SIM card yesterday, and holy crap, is the service awesome. It is so much better than Verizon. Right here, we'll see when you get around the other areas, but right here, it's so much better. Like, I can disconnect from our Wi-Fi and get 160 megabits per second of speed in our shop. It's fantastic. Anyway, I'm helping my mom and dad get their phones set up, so I've been working on that a little bit. So, uh, Brock's coming tomorrow. We're going to keep working on this in the cornhead, maybe power wash the cornhead off. Um, we might try and drag shields out. we got all those shields in the back, a few of them laying around here that are dirty. They need to get washed, and it's still decent warm out. It may get cold on us before too long. So, um, Other than that, I don't know what else we got going on stuff, working on the combine still, so... Um, I mean, we're almost to the point where we can start putting stuff back together. So I think, I think probably washing shields is, is a good idea. So thanks for watching today. Like, subscribe, questions, comments, leave them down below. And uh, we'll see you again tomorrow morning.